realities on the ground. So the quartet uh, uh, adapted the idea that what Israel needs to do is to release some of the places that are very close to the Palestinian cities and give them the possibility to build there. Why not? It's going to be anyway the Palestinian state as long as we truly believe in the idea of two states for two peoples. In, if we believe in, this, in the idea of two states for two peoples, it's going to be the Palestinian state. So let them build there after all these years. And in a way, ease a little bit the tension uh, when we are facing uh, places with, uh, or that, uh, that are highly uh, populated. More than that, I would not uh, accept an equivalence between settlements and terror. And there is no just cause for terrorism. And terror is terror is terror. But after saying that, I want to say a few words about settlements activities. And I want to say very clearly that settlements or new settlements activity doesn't give Israel more security. The settlements are part of another vision, of the vision of greater Israel. I was there. We were all there. The idea of Menachem Begin, when he was, even before being a prime minister, was to give equal rights to all the Palestinians that are living there. Because this was the nature of values that were the basis of my parents' ideology and Begin's ideology. But later on, we decided not to have greater Israel as a concept, but two states for two peoples. So settlements are not part of the Israeli vision these days. This is the vision of minority, as I said. So what's the use of building more, or expanding settlements, or sending young people to live in these places? Israel's security is being taken care of by the Israeli army, not by civilians. We need to give them security once they are there. And more than that, during all these years, Israel built in settlements activities and uh, in settlements. And no matter what you think about these activities, whether it is part of the Jewish people coming back to the homeland of our forefathers, or whether this was an historical, idiotic, excuse me, mistake to build these settlements. We have these blocks of settlements that most of the Israelis are living there. And these blocks of settlements are very close to the green line, what was the line before 67. And the good news is that it takes only a few percentage of the West Bank. And it is clear to everybody who would negotiate on behalf of Israel is that we need to have these blocks of settlements with most of the Israelis that are living there as part of a future Israel. So let's make a distinction. Let's speak with the world. Let's say, yes, we want to keep the blocks of settlements, but we don't want to keep the isolated settlements that are outside of the blocks. And therefore, we are willing to free settlements out outside of the fence, the security fence, outside of the blocks. But when Israel is not making the right distinction, the world is not doing this as well. And therefore, when we are uh, reading the Quartet uh, recommendation, they are talking about freeze of settlements. If Israel is not making the distinction, why should they? And this is a huge mistake coming from Israel. If we want to have the support of the world, on our basic interest, let's speak with the world. Let's convince the world what are our interests. Let's have priorities. What is very important for, for us and what is less important for us. Because otherwise there are those that are making decisions for us. And therefore I believe that Israel should accept the uh, Quartet Report. And there is another thing there. And this is the idea of having something regional. They support the idea of Egypt, Israel, the Palestinians, and other states in the region coming together, speaking, and hopefully relaunching negotiations. Now, I know that there are uh, lots of Israelis that are talking about regional peace. It is tempting. I mean, we don't have a real conflict with these Arab states, like, of course, we have peace treaties with Jordan and Egypt. 